Fromage Fry, it's me again, and in this one, I'm having a go on this. This isn't, what is it? This isn't streaky bacon. I nearly said this isn't bacon rashes, but I have already done that a long time ago. But we'll come to that. So this isn't streaky bacon, high in protein. There's the traffic lights, which are all green and one red. Hello, just for your information, you might not tell the difference between this product and bacon. Pretty, pretty cool. Hmm, I think you can already tell just by looking at it. I mean, I was chatting with Veggie Matt, exchanged a couple of comments with Veggie Matt a couple of hours ago, and he said what I've been saying all along. This just don't look real. This alternative meat-free bacon, it just don't look real. That's like, I always think that's like toy, toy bacon or joke bacon. I think the first one I reviewed was the Richmond one. And that's what I said in that. It, and that one weren't great, to be fair. Now, getting to the other one, the stable mate of this, this isn't bacon rashes. That was really good. The only downside to it, if it bothers you, is it just nothing like bacon to look at. It's just little oblong strips of whatever it is. But it tasted amazing, the texture was amazing, and it smelled, I always say, it smelled more like bacon than bacon does. And what I mean by that, if you get the smell of bacon and then intensify it by half again, that is what this stuff smell like. It's, ama it's amazing stuff, really. Um, I'm just hoping this stuff is the same as it's stable, mate. Um, because that Richmond one was a nightmare to cook. It was an absolute nightmare to cook. And I'm hoping this is not the same. It don't all stick in the pan and, oh, but we'll see. Now, I have not seen the other one, the This Isn't Bacon Rashes in the shops for months and months. I thought they'd stop doing it. But I did go on their website this morning and just to see if, if they are still doing it. And it is still listed in their products list. So, but I don't know. I ain't seen it for months. Um, but yeah. Right. I'll open this up before we uh, go on to part two where I come back about to eat it. Because I want to see what it smells like. But before I do that, let's go through the packaging. Right. That's hus. Why do they do that? Mess around with words. Hus. That's hus. H U S. We asked him to. Oh, sorry, that's his name. I thought they were saying us. It's his name. That's hus. We asked him two years ago if he and his team could please make the most realistic plant based bacon in the world. It had to be low in fat, indis. In I'm, I'm struggling to say this word. Indistinguishable. Indistinguishable. Oh, here we go. I'm saying it wrong, aren't I? In, indistinguishable from bacon and not crazy expensive. At first he laughed and then he mostly just looked like that. He's got his head in his hands. Please enjoy this. For his sake. That's, I quite like that. That's like a little personal message. A little story. Personal story. I quite like that. That sort of bridges the gap between big corporations, big companies and the, the person buying it. It just makes it a little bit more human, I think. I quite like that. Also, we're really, really lovely to everyone and everything, whatever that's saying there, certified something, S certified B Corporation, whatever that means, okay, right, allergens, soya, 
And that's it. Plant-based streaky bacon style rashes made from soy and pea protein and olive oil. Suitable for vegetarians and vegans. Okay, so there is the ingredients. And there is the nutritionals. Right, now, how much did it cost? I mean, that's saying that's new on there. That I've seen this in the shops for months and months. That ain't new. Unless they've improved it. But how much did I pay? Now, this is the downside to this stuff and why I hardly ever buy it. It's so expensive. So it's 105 grams. 105 grams. Hopefully you can see that. 105 grams and it cost three pound fifty god blimey three fifty or you can pick up four for ten pound i think that's in morrison's four for ten pound which brings it to two pound fifty and you don't have to buy four of these but you can buy four of whatever the other things they've got on the shelf. This isn't range, I think. Um, which isn't too bad. If that was 250 that's not too bad. It's still expensive for 100 grams. But that's not too bad. Especially when the market for this is very, very limited. Like I say, the Richmond one was a poor effort. It was the first one I did, and had it have been, if if I'd have reviewed that after I did the stable mount of this, it would have got a lower score. The only reason it got, and I think I gave it an eight, was because I didn't know what the competition was going to be like, and I had to assume I might buy it again. And it did have a bit of taste to it. So for me, hadn't had a bacon sarni for years and years. It was nice just to get a little bit of that experience back. But after then reviewing this, the stable mate of this, I probably would have scored that Richmond one lower. But the stable mate of this got a very high score. Very high score. Because, like I said, it the texture is brilliant. The taste is amazing. The smell is absolutely unbelievable. It just didn't look like bacon. Now this does look like bacon even though it looks a bit cartoony fied um, and if it's got the texture the taste and the smell and it cooks okay it doesn't get all sticking to the pan look because it's paper thin that up that old richmond stuff it's paper thin if this isn't like that then this could be a good product right before we get on to the part two Let's open it up and have a smell. Oh yeah. Yeah, that smell like bacon. If anything, I'd say it probably does smell about just about on a level par with bacon now. And it's not like over like smell more like bacon than bacon. It's, it probably does smell just like normal bacon. Ugh. Let me see if I can open it up enough for you to have a look at it. I tell you what, it does look pretty good. There is a bit of detail in the rind. In the rind, that isn't just one colour, that's... Wow! That is not like the Richmond one. Now, I'm going to see if I get a right good close-up on this. So you guys can get a good look at that. Look at that, look. That actually does look a little, a lot more like bacon than that Richmond one. And the other ones I've seen. That that rind is not just white. There's a lot of a different texture and different colour between the 
the root or the brownie red bit and the white bit. There's like a middle layer. So they've gone to some effort to actually make it look like bacon. Okay, right. Well, I think, hang on, how have I got to cook this in the hob? Definitely in the, on the hob. Using a non-stick pan, fry the bacon in two teaspoons of oil on medium heat for two minutes on each side until crispy. Right, that's what I shall do. And I'll probably, how many's in here? It's hard to tell. I think there's just six rashers, I think. Well, I'm going to do all them. I'm not, is there six or is there double layers there? Do you know what? I don't know. I think there's six in it. Can you, we'll be able to zoom in on that. Look like there's six rashes. Oh, they're in, there's nine. Nine rashes in there. It's a bit much to cook nine up. But that's only a hundred gram. I'm going to do them all. I'm not messing about. Right, okay then. I think it's time to fire up the old hob and get some rashers in the pan. Okay, guys. Here it is. Here is the This Isn't Streaky Bacon. And I have to say, I'm quite impressed with this stuff. I mean, look at it. It does look like streaky bacon. It didn't cook up brilliantly. It did kind of break up a bit. All the white bits came away from the, the red bits on the other ones most. This was the best one, but all this sort of stuff happened. Um, and also, it almost had like a bit of a uh, slime to it. So when you pulled them apart, they were like, there was like a slime. That is weird. But they've really tried hard to make it like bacon. When you, t when you handle it, it's got that damp stickiness about it like bacon's got. Really weird. Don't smell too much of bacon now, I have to say. Well, that's because I got used to it. Right, now, if you've watched the other bacon ones, I don't like sauce on my bacon sarnies. And I'm calling them bacon sarnies for a reason. You'll find out at the end. Um, yeah, I don't like... I've never liked putting sauce on my bacon sarnies because... I like bacon so much, and it's such a lovely flavour, I didn't like to, to ruin it by going and putting brown or red sauce on it. So here we go. Actually, I'll open it up so you can have a look. That is... This isn't... Streaky bacon, Sarni. Bob, go on. Go lay down, my man. Come on. Go lay down. Right, here we go. Let's see what it's like. Right. It's got the feel of bacon. I can't believe it. They got the hard bit right. They got it looking like bacon. The texture's like bacon. Everything about it is like bacon. They got the flavour right on their other product. But they haven't got it in this product. The, the flavour's not quite there. I 
Oh, such a shame. It's still blue. It's really good though. This product is seriously good. If they hadn't, if I hadn't had their other product, I would be really banging on about it. But if they was to just put the flavour of the other product into this one, I think you could kid me eaters that is bacon. Like cooked, not before you cook it. Give them that. And if that had the flavour of the other one, if I slipped a couple of the other rashers in there with that, I reckon they would think. They were eating bacon. That's good. It's just lacking flavour. Oh, such a shame. Yeah, and I know it is because I've had that product a lot since I reviewed it up until about four or five months ago and since then, like I said, I can't get hold of it. I've probably had it about five times since I reviewed it and uh, I know the flavour's absolutely amazing. Right, let's just try it on its own. Right there, Bill Bill. So there is your, your bacon rasher again. The rind is just like bacon rind. I have done a serious job on this. They just need to put more flavouring in it. They got the hard bit done and then they went and skimped on the flavouring. That's really good. Now, score. I've got a bit of rind stuck in my teeth. Right, score. Now, even though this is very um, expensive for what it is, it's a bit like vegan stuff, um, where they're a bit like vegan cheese and that. There's, it's very hard. There's not much of it about, so they bump the price up. And if you come across a really good product, you don't mind paying a bit more because you are getting a good product and you can't really get it anywhere else. So even though this is expensive, had this have had the flavour of its stable mate, this would have scored the highest score I've ever given on this channel. But because it's lacking in flavour, I can't. I just can't. So I think the other one looks nothing like bacon, but it tastes like bacon and it's got the texture of bacon this looks like bacon really looks like bacon it's got the texture of bacon but it's lacking in flavor it has got flavor it's just not nowhere near as strong as the other one so they sort of balance each other out so for that reason i'm going to give it the same score 9.5 if i had to if I had a choice over the same price, sitting on the shelf, same weight, same price, which one would I pick up? I think if I was having a bacon, um, like that, I would pe pick the other product up, the rashers one up. If I was doing like a fry up with it, so you could actually see it on the plate, I would pick this one up. So they're very equal. It's just such a shame they've failed on the easy bit for me. They just need to put more flavouring in it. And this, I would have probably have scored this a 9.7 if they'd have got the flavour in there. That is a seriously good product. 
look at it. I mean, have a look at it. It really does look like bacon. It's lost its smell now it's cooked though. Right, there we are guys. They are boo boo. You can smell it, can't you boo boo? That's why Bob was hanging around. He could probably smell it and all. It's just not as strong as the other one. Right, okay guys, there we go. That is another fast broken buy a food review. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll join me and I'll boo boo it, the custard kid, again soon on another video. Take care, guys. Right, here we go, Boo Boo. Your turn now, my man. We've got a question coming. Question. I have to be really careful in this review. You'll find out why in a minute. Oh, we nearly got Bob's treat then. Whoa. There you go, Boo Boo. Get back, Boo Boo. That's it. Keep out of the way, my man. Oh, blind me. There it goes. That's now heading off around the world. And when it come back, it's going to land on the answer to this question. Now, this question's a bit of fun. And Bob is licking down now. I hope that's not coming through in the audio. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of fun, really. Now, we, us Brits, we call this thing all sorts of different names, don't we? Depend on where you live in the country. So my question is, now, I kept referring to this, hopefully I did, as a bacon sarmi. Now, that ain't what I'd normally call it. Sometimes I would call it a bacon sandwich. There's a few names I'd call it. Actually, every one of these I would call it this, but there's one I would call it way more times than the other two. So my question is, what would I mostly call what I have eaten in this review? Is it A, a bacon bat, B, a bacon butty, or C, a bacon roll? What would I mostly call what I've eaten in this review? A, a bacon bat, B, a bacon butty, or C, a bacon roll? And more importantly, guys, get in the comments and tell me what you call that food item. Bacon in two bits of bread, like a roll type bread not a slice if that was like slices of bread from a loaf of bread i would call that a bacon sandwich but with it being in that a bacon roll a bat or a roll or a bat whatever you want to call it what would you guys call that a bacon what batch cob what else do you call them loads of things in that oh get in the comments let me know what you guys call that please Right, catch you on another one. Cheers, guys. Bye.